Hello, I am Gus. I'm Tim. And today we're here to talk a little bit about Foley. That's right. So I actually don't know very much about Foley, but Tim does. So Tim, what is Foley? Well, to uh, put it simply, uh, Foley is really just the creation or art of making sounds, which has been used from, you know, really the earliest when uh, sound studios, when uh, movie studios started going from silent pictures into sound, they needed uh, sounds for the backdrop, as well as uh, all the um, uh, the radio shows, regular programs at that time were also using it heavily just for that other essence to help kind of make the imagery in your mind be a bit stronger, more vivid. And so that's essentially what all this foliar is. This, all, all this stuff on the table is essentially, uh, it's just called a foliar table and these are different effects. Now this would not be the setup for like a movie per se, uh, but this is just to give you an idea of what different kinds of foley uh, effects might be. So I noticed that there's not like a computer here. So do they, you know, why not? Why, why, don't, why don't you just use a computer for all these effects? Well, personally, I just have really loved the idea of doing things the traditional way. And I like, I think it gives it a bit more of a visual sure. cue. And so all these things are, whenever I do radio dramas, and I've produced a few uh, so far in my life, and we'll be producing one later this year, as a matter of fact, this is the type of setup that I like to have. I just think, I mean, it's it's way easier, certainly, to use digital sound cues, but visually this is more interesting, and I think it adds another sense of, not, not quite sincerity, but um, just more Spatial, oomph. yeah, that you're in the room with the person that you're watching. Mm -hmm, exactly, and that this, yeah. is, this is the process by which those kind of things would have happened. You know, I think, I think one thing that I've heard a little bit about Foley is that sometimes the actual sounds that are made like on a movie set mm -hmm. aren't as, as noisy or quite what you think they would sound like. And so one of the things about Foley is that it beefs up the sound and makes, you know, maybe a door slamming on set kind of doesn't sound so good, but you, with your door here, you can really mm -hmm. make sure that sound is, is got the oomph it should have so that it has that presence like you're right talking. exactly and that's in dealing with film they a lot of times do what's called ADRing which is automatic dialogue replacement and that's the sound of putting everything in post afterwards so like just to give an example there's a video out there that we'll link in the description um, of uh, Hugh Jackman from the movie Logan as he's running along hmm. and making all of those grunting sounds and everything that would not have come across that well um, through mics while he's actually doing that action. And they would have had to have that mic like like right here. Oh, absolutely, just to get those, <laughs> get, just to get that sound. Yeah, and that would have kind of distracted from the Exactly, it would have made shot. it much more difficult as well, just yeah. having all that wiring and stuff. I mean, you can have wireless mics, mm -hmm. obviously. That's true. Um, but so in that case, they went in afterwards and he would um, watch the screen as he's going and just make those sounds. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for the sound of him actually running, like the footfalls. Um, those are also done in very much the same way. Well, it looks like you have just a, an awesome array of different effects here. Um, I think I might step off camera and just let you kind of introduce some of these different effects. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Go for Sounds it. Sounds good. So what I've got here, um, starting just we'll just start from from this side and go and go onwards. So here we've got the walk the, the door. So just quite simple. Opening up, slamming it there. Uh, I've got um, this is just. Essentially, just kind of looks like a curtain rod, which is what it is. So I've done shows in which we needed the sound of drapes being drawn, and so what we did was we just did like that, or to give it that sound. So that's one thing. And all this stuff has been built from scratch. It's nothing you can really buy. I mean, perhaps you could. I don't even think you could buy a small door at this point. So all of this has been built from scratch. So I've got that. I've got this is my my slap board or my slapper which is great for, it could be used for gunshots. However, I have a better method for that. Usually I use um, balloons for that kind of thing and some pins to pop those and it makes a much better, more robust, more round sound. Uh, other stuff I've got here, I've got um, these two, which is, are just two small boards with sandpaper attached to them that are great for the sound of like a body dragging or something along those lines. And I just think it's really, really interesting the way to do that. Um, here I've got just a bucket of like dirt and gravel for the sound of digging. And that, you know, I didn't just go anywhere and find, I actually had to kind of steal the dirt and gravel from a construction site. But beside the point, it works really well for that. Uh, here is uh, a squeaker, which at the moment needs to be adjusted, but ideally 
like the squeaking of like uh, floorboards or like a door as you're walking past. Uh, here, just the phone, mostly for the sound of picking up or dialing like this. Or, you know, if you're receiving a call, which I appear to be doing, give me just a second. Hello? <clears throat> Sorry about that. That happens. All, well, it shouldn't happen often, but it does. Uh, anyway, moving on. So here I've got what's called the walk board. And this is one of the coolest pieces I think that I have. Um, you'll notice that it is up on a bit of an elevation. And that can be switched at a moment's notice if we need to. But ideally, for the sound of shoes as they're walking. So, And I don't have the motion quite down right at the moment. But that's what that's good for. Uh, and you could, this could be tailored to have carpet over top of it if that was necessary or if I want to like pour gravel across to give it that sound. Uh, there are other methods to do that, um, but this is one of the most portable for my uses. Here I've got what I call my lock board and just what it seems like, just a bunch of different locks that, you know, you know, as you're getting into a house. I've used this before on different radio productions and I find it really, really handy. Um, one, of the, one of the coolest pieces that I really have is what's called my wind machine. And so what this does essentially is, if I angle this this way a little bit just so we don't get the reverb, what there are is there are a bunch of slats underneath here that with space in between them that are hitting the canvas as the wheel turns. And you'll see what that sounds like here in a second. And so that just generates the sound of wind as it is. There are various other forms, like there's a thunder, um, stuff we can use for thunder, like a, a sheet of metal that can be used, or like a thunder gourd, stuff like that. There's, there's any number of ways that you can create sounds uh, from the sounds of like bones cracking, for instance. A really great use of that is just breaking some celery. Uh, so that's really what I've got here, and that's the really cool aspect of all of this, is that not only is it visually interesting, it adds kind of that old school component that just is really cool. All right, well, thanks, Tim, for giving us kind yeah, of definitely. overview. All right, so I had a question for Tim, and yeah, that okay. is, what is the favorite, your favorite effect you've ever seen in a film? Ooh, well, I've got a couple. At least as far as film goes, I really love, there's one specifically from Star Wars, <laughs> which is the sound that the blasters make. Hmm, and I mean, how do they do that? So from what my research has led me to, what they have done is that they've taken, they, they, they took some kind of, I think, steel rod or something like that, and the cables that are usually hooked to like gigantic radio towers, they just were... That, that was the technique, and they just recorded that a few times, and that was the sound for the actual blasters. Wow. Um, but one of my other favorites one, there were ones, and one that I really want to add to my collection, is what's called a water phone. Oh, cool. Which is used on... Um, like horror films for that, like that really kind of screechy, eerie sound. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, jarring, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, so that is one of my favorite. Like, I, I think I've researched them before, and they're like two or three hundred bucks. So it's, it's kind of an expensive piece. It's, it's, it's affordable <laughs> as far as instruments go. It's yeah, not like could, could a couple work. thousand dollars for certainly, <laughs> um, but it's a really unique instrument that is just by far one of the coolest I've ever seen. And I think my favorite effect I've ever seen, and it's, it may even be the same thing you're talking about. There's this thing called, I think I just call it the blaster beam. And it was an effect they used a couple times in the, in the first installment of the recent Star Trek movies. And it's basically this epic, just one hit. And it, it's like... Yeah. And they used it for like, I think a big bomb exploding or something. Oh, I could see that. So it, yeah. I, but the instrument is like a 12 foot long um, thing and it's got um, cables stretched along it, kind of like what you were describing. Mm -hmm. And they hit it with a mallet of some kind and it just makes this awesome noise. Yeah, it's really cool. Like this, that alone, like both of those are elements of just the, the testament that uh, what Foley and what sound effects can bring oh, to, totally. not, to any kind of production, whether it's radio drama or film or stuff like that. It's just really, it's a really unique uh, job and, and, and a way to create you know that, that extra sense that's there and it's just something that I don't think a lot of people are aware of yeah totally um, so real quick something I thought that I might mention that's just kind of a, an interesting side note 
is mm. kind of there's kind of the idea of reverse folly. Mm. And and what I mean by that is at times we do things to overemphasize the visual of something to heighten the auditory. And this happens a lot in music. So an example of this is my wife is a percussionist and so she plays um, timpani. And on the timpani, a lot of times they will raise their mallet up higher in the air to try to make it look like they're pounding the drum harder, when in reality they're using about the same amount of pressure. Huh. But just by showing you more visual, it adds to your perception of that volume. Oh, that's really cool. Another way that musicians have used this, specifically with timpani again, is there's a composer who specifically wrote into a, a part for the timpanist to throw themselves into a, a timpano, into one of the drums, just as an emphasis of just how loud this note is supposed to be. Now, ironically, that drum actually didn't have a head on it. It was just a piece of paper stretched over it so that they don't hurt themselves when they try to throw themselves through it. Huh. So the actual noise is coming from the bass drum. But, oh, that's very but it's, cool. it's just there to try to emphasize to the audience how huge and glorious this note is. So I don't know, I just thought it was kind of a fun example. No, of absolutely. Almost like a reverse Foley. That's very cool. We were talking earlier and we thought it might be um, helpful to emphasize the importance of Foley to um, modern film work. Mm -hmm. uh, just to show you a video that, that we've made without sound, or without Foley, I should say, mm -hmm. and then add the Foley back in so you can really get an idea of just how important Foley is these days. Exactly, and it's gonna be, so just kind of sit back and enjoy and, and we'll uh, show them side by side and see what you think. Great. So hopefully you understand now the importance of Foley and mm -hmm. you'll maybe have more of an open ear when you're watching a movie or when you're listening to a radio program. Um, that some of the sounds you're hearing may not actually be the sounds that you heard in that room. They may be some awesome person like Tim who is going back over that footage and they are creating even cooler sounds to really emphasize those points. Exactly. So thank you for tuning in. Mm -hmm. um, if you like this video, go on down below, hit subscribe. If you liked it, like it as well. And uh, if you can stand more of our content, we hope to see you back here again soon. Absolutely. So, and feel free to share. Thanks.